Okay, well, this is a follow-up lesson to um, separating differential equations, and we ended with this in class or on the video last time. And this is where we use our calculus skills. Excuse me, let me get my pen going. We use our calculus skills to understand that when we have a rate of change, it's equal to a constant times the y value. Excuse me, y value, not t. And so we we use calculus then to take this this equation and separate, integrate, integrate, so we could come up with basically a law for exponential growth or decay that works every time. So the y value, the amount of substance, is equal to the initial value, and then e is continuously compounding, and then k is the rate, and t is your time. Isn't that fantastic? So our calculus skills is how we came up with this law of exponential growth. So now let's apply this law, okay? Now here we have a problem where we know the rate of change of y is proportional to y. Well, great, that's what we've been talking about, dy dt equals ky. Well, since we've already proven that this is equal to y, the initial value, e to the kt, we can use the information given to find this value. So we are told that the initial value is 2 when t equals 0. So we know that y, the initial value, is 2 e to the kt. Okay? Everyone good with that? Now, when t equals 4, so after 2 minutes or 2 hours, we know that we have 4 units of substance in this petri dish, let's say. So 4 equals 2 e to the k, and the time was 2. Now, we can solve for that constant of proportionality now by using natural logs and such. So I have, I divide by 2, so I get 2 equals e to the 2k, and then I take the natural log of both sides, natural log, natural log, so I have the natural log of 2 is equal to 2k, so then k is equal to the natural log of 2 over 2 is equal to k then. Isn't that fantastic? So now that we have that, we can write the equation. So we have y equals 2 e, and k is the natural log of 2 over 2 times t. So using this function, if I want to find the y value when t is 3, so now we substitute 3 for t, so y will equal 2 times e, natural log of 2 over 2 times 3. And we can use our calculators to find the value that is there. Okay. Now, here's another example. Now, this is half-life. Now, I know that you've done half-life in Algebra 2, but you may not have understood where that half-life formula came from. Or did you? I don't know. So, for half-life, we are given some facts. We have 65 minutes in half-life. Okay, that's important. And if decay is modeled by the differential equation dy over d, I think that's supposed to be t, equals negative k times y. Now, why is it negative this time? Because it's decay. We're decreasing. Well, since we have proven that this is y equals y sub 0, e to the negative kt, we can use this function to find what I need to find. Okay? Now, interesting is it's half-life. So if my original amount is 100, then I'm looking for when it will become 50. If the original amount is 1,000, I'm looking for when the original amount will be 500. So we can say that I'm looking for when the amount of my substance will be half that of what I've started with, right? e to the negative kt. So if I divide by y of 0, I get 1 half is equal to e to the negative kt, okay? And I'm given that in 65 minutes. I want to find this. So if I substitute 65, 1 half equals e to the negative 65t. Okay? And then I would take the natural log of both sides. The natural log of 1 half is equal to negative 65t, because natural log and e undo each other. And then I divide by negative 65. So I get the natural log of 1 half divided by negative 65 is equal to t. Well, I'm going to do some work with my natural log to simplify this a little bit. We know that 1 half is negative 2, right? Wait, I'm sorry, 2 to the negative 1. I was kind of freaking out there. Whoa, come back, pencil. Oh, it's 
2 to the negative 1 over negative 65. And then we know with our rules of logarithms, when I have a negative exponent, that just means multiply it by negative. So negative time divided by negative is a positive. So I end up with the natural log of 2 over 65. This is the amount of time it will take to get a half-life. Now, do you notice how this relates to the original problem? We end up with the half-life is natural log of 2 over 65. Well, look, 65 is the amount of minutes. So you know what? We can actually find a formula that works for all of half-life. So let's put our mathematician's hat on. And here is the original problem. We have the initial value, e to the negative kt, and we're looking for half of the, of the initial value. So now, when I divide by y sub 0, of course, we get e to the negative kt equals 1 half. And then we take the natural log of both sides. So then I have negative kt equals natural log of 1 half. And then when we divide by negative k, we get the negative 1 over k, natural log of 1 half. And then using our properties of logarithms that I just showed you, the natural log of 1 half is the same as the natural log of 2 to the negative 1, which is negative natural log of 2. So we will always end up with the time is the natural log of 2 over k. Isn't that fantastic? I thought so, too, myself. Okay, one last problem. And we've got the inversion of sugar. Woo! So we have to look at this problem, and we are told that the process has begun, that the rate of change of the amount of raw sugar is proportional to the amount of raw sugar remaining. Voila! That is exactly what I want to hear. The rate of change of my sugar is equal to the amount of sugar proportional to the value. Okay. So since we are given that, we have proven that this is equal to the initial amount, e, to the kt. Fantastic. Now, all I need to do is plug in the facts. So the facts are if 1,000 kilograms of raw sugar reduces to 800. So I have 800 equals 1,000, e to the kt. And then let's see. I'm also told that this occurs during 10 hours. So I have 800 equals 1,000 times e, and then that would be 10k. So let's use our Algebra 2 skills and solve. So I divide by 1,000, and I get 0.8 equals e to the 10k. I take the natural log of both sides, and I get natural log of 0.8 is 10k. And then I divide by 10. So now I have the natural log of 0.8 divided by 10 is equal to k. Phew! So we go and put that back into the original problem. y equals the initial amount is 1,000 e, and it, the k is natural log of 0.8 over 10. And what is the time I'm looking for? Huh. It says after another 14 hours. Well, I had 10 hours, so that means 24 hours. And lo and behold, I just put this in my calculator, and the time is approximately 585.35 years. Now make sure you come to class tomorrow with these examples written down clearly and thoroughly. Notes. See you then.